Hey there Koala Bear, I'm Kale and welcome to my channel. So recently I made a video, uh, you might have seen it, it's the only one on my channel, how I lost over 20 kilos on a whole food plant based diet and I've actually kept the weight off for years. So thank you for your DMs and your comments and everyone who shared it and liked it. Being a whole new thing for me, it, the support and encouragement really means a lot. Um, I got a few questions and the questions were stuff like, okay, well this is awesome, but um, what does that actually mean? Like in terms of whole foods, when I go to the store, what do I even buy? Like what's my shopping list look like? So here's my list of what I buy every single week for health and weight loss and a few brief reasons why. Number one, beans. So I'm going to say beans, but this whole entire category is really like beans and legumes or anything in that sort of family. Black beans, white beans, uh, red kidney beans, cannellini beans, pretty much any of the beans that you can see around your stores. So all of these foods are a really valuable source of energy. They contain lots of carbohydrates and protein. They are jam packed with dietary fiber, both soluble and insoluble, meaning that they have a really slow digesting effect. Meaning that you're not only full and satiated for this meal that you're having right now, but also for subsequent meals during the day. And beans are super cheap. Who doesn't love cheap food? Plus, they have amazing shelf life too. So when you buy dried beans, you don't have to use all of them. You can leave some on the shelf and they last a really long time. I don't know how much time, but a really long time. If you don't have a way to cook dried beans, then just get canned beans. Number two, pumpkin. Pumpkin is delicious. I think it's one of the most hearty foods you can get and it gives you so much satiation for its actually low calorie level. Pumpkin is a really delicious food that provides amazing levels of vitamin A and vitamin C. And unlike getting vitamin A and vitamin C from supplement sources, which these extracted isolated sources can arguably cause health issues in the long run when consuming it in its isolated source, such as cancer risk, especially vitamin A. Vitamin A and vitamin C found in whole foods is easily understood and regulated by your body. Number three, potatoes. Potatoes are such a great source of energy, but a lot of people, myself in the past included, have been really scared of potatoes and not just potatoes, but carbohydrates in general. And I think that's because of a lot of misunderstanding out there. Potatoes are a really wonderful whole foods. They're just paired with not so wonderful foods most of the time, such as cream cheeses or cheeses or bacon or beef. So all of these toppings, when you think about it, the extra saturated fat, the extra oils going on top of the potato, that is what's causing the negative health consequences. When you have a potato chip, for example, it's not the potato that's the problem, it's the deep frying and oil that's the problem. It's the buckets of salt on top that's the problem. Every day I try to get at least a quarter to a third of my food from starch based foods. Number four, spinach. Spinach is an amazing source of vitamins and minerals such as vitamin K and magnesium and calcium and much more. I love getting it in its frozen form simply because of cost and convenience. I use it as the base of my green smoothie every single day with banana and chia and fat. in the air. So just like frozen spinach, frozen peas are on this list because I can just whip them out at any time and add them to pretty much any single dish in a minute. They are a nutritionally dense source of calories, good for a little bit of protein, and I just love them. Plus, as a bonus, I mix them into my dog's food as well because they love them. And veggies are actually really good for our furry loved ones as well. Number six, carrots. Carrots are on this list for me because one, they are literally cheaper than chips like cheaper than chips. You can buy a whole kilo for under $2 and they last in the fridge for like a week. So I just batch cube them up and just pop them in a massive container at the start of the week. And I pretty much just use them for everything. So have you got a salad? Just chuck some cubed carrots on top of it. Do you have a soup? Just chuck some cubed carrots in it. Do you have the air fryer on for some reason that you're air frying something? Just chuck some cubed carrots in there as well. Do you feel like a little snack, a little something something? Open the fridge and voila, you've got some fresh cubed carrots right there. If you are new to eating whole foods or are transitioning into a whole foods diet, the easiest way of adapting your taste buds and changing your routine is to lazyify whole foods. Meaning that you've got to make your whole food food easier and more tempting to get than the other processed junk that's already pretty easy to get that's in the cupboard. Another helpful hint, sorry partners, sorry to my partner, but if you have a partner that doesn't eat whole foods and has other stuff in the kitchen, the best thing to do is to just hide all that stuff. So you can't see it, so you can't be tempted, and now you don't have to worry about it. I'm just kidding. Over time, it actually does become a lot easier. Just in the interim, just do what you can to lazyify your whole foods. No seven grains. I mean, I mean, 
grains. Grains! So just like my beans, I actually like to mix up a whole variety of grains every single week. The reason I do this is because the more variety of types of foods you eat in a day, the more densely popularized your microbiome ecosystem is. So I use a blend of the cheapest grains that I can find, erring on the side of the healthier ones, meaning less processed. So personally, I mix together red rice, tricolored quinoa, brown rice, and uh, barley together. And I mix it all into a big container, and then I just cook it as needed. And if you're choosing between white rice and brown rice, go for the brown rice as it has more intact fiber. Grains are a great way of filling up your satiation levels, give you slow burning energy, and also fuel up your gut bacteria with fiber. Eight, canned tomatoes. I still consider canned whole foods still whole foods, even if they do come in cans, because I think the ease of use of the practicality of these foods outweighs any sort of um, minimal health benefits you might get in the whole food. I made canned tomatoes a part of my top 10 list because I think they're just such an amazing way to bulk up any single dish. So if you're making a dal, just chuck a bunch of canned tomatoes in. If you're making a soup, chuck some canned tomatoes in. If you're making pasta sauce, you can chuck some cans of diced tomatoes in. You know, you can buy them whole tomatoes, diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. They're very practical and convenient. Number nine. Rocket or arugula. Each day I like adding rocket or arugula to my dishes because they are a cruciferous vegetable. Cruciferous vegetable. Crusty forest vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables contain large amounts of sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is important to our bodies because they actually activate gene pathways that are anti-inflammatory and anti-oxidizing. It is cancer preventative and studies have shown that high levels of sulforaphane actually help aid your body in excreting carcinogens. It is a green leafy vegetable and I love green leafy vegetables because they contain high amounts of vitamins and minerals at a really low calorie density. So you can eat lots of it. I incorporate green leafy vegetables into at least two of my meals every single day. Probably more because I don't just have three meals. One thing to note, I'm not a pusher of organic foods. I don't think that you need to eat organic to live healthily, but um, because it is a soft leafy green that you're eating and it doesn't have a hard exterior wall type thing like a banana or an orange, I do recommend that you actually go for organic if you can, if it's possible for you, um, just because you want to protect yourself against eating all those added chemical pesticides that they've put on top. If you can't get organic, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to. Um, just don't forget to wash them as much as you can. Number 10, mixed frozen berries. Frozen berries might be kind of cheating because it is a mix of frozen raspberries, frozen blueberries, and frozen blackberries. But uh, that's how my store packaged them all up and that's how I would buy them. So, uh, you know, what am I gonna do? So fruits are hugely important to our diets, especially for kids. Many researchers indicate that fruits, along with starches and veggies, I mean, a massive contributor to our species, evolutionarily speaking. So I think fruits are the best natural source of quick energy. And so that means I like to start most of my days with some fruit. I'll either just have my breakfast be a bowl of fruits, and I think that's awesome. If I'm feeling hungrier, then I'll usually satiate myself with something else, like beans or rice, and give myself some real like fullness for the day. But I'll also incorporate fruits into my snacks earlier on. Dark berries tend to have a higher number of antioxidants. So the antioxidants made in the plant were originally created to help the plant protect itself from sun damage and protect itself from these things called reactive oxygen species. And those antioxidants can be used throughout our bodies to help us with our own free radicals and oxidative stress. AKA, it defends our bodies from aging faster than we need to. AKA, it defends our bodies from internal cellular fuck ups. Berries have also been linked to brain health and heart health. For more information on this, Go check out Dr. Gregor from nutritionfacts.org. So yeah, this was my top 10 list of grocery items that I would buy in a store. Also, I'm a big believer of health being affordable. I don't think that you can only achieve health if you drive all the way to this random health food store and buy this tea or buy this supplement. Health can come in simple whole food nutrition that's accessible for everyone. And sure, there might be some sort of superfood out there with technically higher levels of this or technically higher levels of that, meaning that some sort of strain of something is a little bit more potent. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at a whole food, plant-based diet that's um, high carb, low fat, I think that you're not gonna have any sort of trouble with this sort of stuff. You don't need to have these random superfoods in order to achieve health. If you are giving your body the required levels of calories it needs to burn throughout the day, if you are filling it up on whole foods, good foods, not packaged foods. If you are, um, generally speaking, using sort of like this ratio of food, if you're 
not just like only eating oranges or something for the whole day. Not that you even could um, fill up on your calorie requirements for the day just eating that, like one type of thing. If you are generally speaking eating a variety of foods, you will get your health, you will get your nutrition. You don't need to worry about um, health or weight loss being out of your reach. I always used to make it hard for myself in the past, but the more I've simplified everything, the more I've just started to understand that it doesn't have to be overcomplicated and it doesn't have to be stressful. Thanks for listening. I hope this video was helpful for you. This was just my top 10 list and based on my thoughts and my preferences. If you have any other sort of changes that you want to make to the list based on your preferences, then please go ahead and do that because I think the top 10 foods that you could possibly buy at a grocery store are the top 10 foods you're actually going to eat. Thanks, thanks for watching. Now, what are you waiting for? Chuck us a like, give us a subscribe. Um, all of that stuff really means a lot to me. Thank you for your support. And um, yeah, love your guts and your guts will love you back.